Hey guys, it's Phoenix. Today I have something very important to share with you. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably gonna be a longer type video. I'm gonna try and cut it down as much as I can. Uh, we have some more developments with the command structures and changes in 1.13, and these are some very big changes. There's one change which I'm not very fond of, um, I'll get to it in a moment, but there are so many command changes in this update. The first thing here is slash clear. You guys know about this already, the NBT is gone, so it's going to be within the item. So a lot of these changes have gone through in the last two videos, I will leave links to them, but be very well aware that all of these changes are not uh, definitive, so they can change, um, as you'll see later on in this uh, in this video. So everything is going to be within item, um, so all the NBT will be structured within here. I'll leave a link to this post, slash clone, I've already gone through this, this has not changed. Default game mode uh, and game mode, they're all the same, so I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, difficulty have gone through this, effect have gone through this, so everything is far more consistent. You'll see a pattern as we go along. Now, slash execute, one of the biggest changes, and it's gone back to slash execute. So it has been added in conjunction with the new slash as and slash at. Now recall I talked about slash offset and slash detect. They're gone. So allow me to explain what has changed. So slash execute as runs as the entity but does not change the position of the executor so we've already talked about this you just have to add slash execute before as so it's not slash as anymore it's slash execute as right similarly with slash at it's now slash execute at this might change but i'm pretty sure this will be the final change well it won't be as substantial as it has been um, but i'm pretty sure this works pretty well in terms of the way we think logically so at is of course at the position of the entity, but the executor doesn't change. So if you run slash execute at, you're still running the command, but it's at the position. There is now slash execute at commands. Now I do not see as many uh, immediate uses for this. You might think of some as we go along, uh, as the timeline progresses, but there are already a lot of base commands which have this ability to set out the coordinates. So whether or not this is sort of a forewarning, um, I'm not too sure but it's there anyway if you need to use it. There is now if and unless for slash execute. Now we already have this for slash function. This is actually gone. I'll talk about it as we go along. If this is in uh, alphabetical order, so functions pretty soon. Um, but now if and unless are relevant to execute, which is beautiful. A lot of the times, uh, if you wanted to use if and unless, you'd have to set it as a function and then run slash function. I'm pretty sure that wasn't intended. So what this basically means is if the block that you've specified is at the location that you specified, if you use the if argument, it will run this command. If it's not there, it won't. And if you use unless, it's the basic opposite of it. So if you use the word unless, if the block is there, it won't run the command. Um, so hopefully you sort of followed that. Uh, I'm not going to go through it again because I know it's going to start confusing you as I explain it a little bit more. Just know these are diametric opposites. Um, now, if and unless also runs if there is a filled location which also satisfies what you have required it to satisfy. So the stipulated uh, region of blocks, if it satisfies it, it will run the command. If it doesn't satisfy it, it won't run the command and also applies with unless. Now, I'm not entirely sure what masked here means. If it is the same as the slash clone command, it's probably talking about non-air blocks. So if you have any air blocks within the location, it probably still will run the command or it'll test for that command. Uh, I don't really know because it doesn't say, uh, but this would be my assumption. And finally, we have execute if entity and unless entity. So if the entity exists, it will run the command. And for unless if it exists, it won't run the command. Um, the difference between this and the above examples uh, or the above commands is that this one only returns one command back. So if you were to execute as for all the entities, like c equals 1, um, it would run as many times if you don't use c equals 1. So this is just like a simplification and an optimization um, alternative. So slash fill, we've talked about this. Uh, slash function, as I've said, there is no more if and unless for slash function. It's all moved to execute. So already one massive change to map making that you have to be aware of. Otherwise, you'll be very confused. Um, game rule doesn't have custom game rules anymore. So you cannot use uh, stats or query results or things like that to create custom game rules, which is fine for me because I've never done it. 
um, I never thought it was the best approach because it doesn't feel as um, as succinct or as practical for me. Um, and it was also very error prone as Dinnerbone has mentioned here. But of course, if you've been using custom game rules, you've got to scrap all of that, you've got to get rid of them, run them through scoreboard objectives. Uh, slash give, again, similar change, NBT, it's all in the item now. And replace item, same stuff with slash give, you don't have the NBT anymore. Scoreboard's gone through that. Set block, again, same thing. Test for, test for block, test for blocks, they've all moved to execute if and execute unless, which is a lot better in my opinion, but now you don't have the comparators anymore, which I know a lot of people still use. It's hilarious. Um, I still use them. It's, it's very easy. It's just you plop a comparator down, you have it uh, filter through a set of commands. Um, toggle down for, that's gone. I don't know why people still use them. I guess it's just old school, but weather clear, that's fine. Um, now we come to slash TP and slash teleport. This is where I am a little bit upset with um, with this change. Uh, slash TP has now been removed. You can still use slash TP, but it's going to change to slash teleport. Now, if you recall back in the day where this change was first introduced because there was an intention for Moyang to, I think it wasn't even Dinnerbone or someone else, they wanted to change it so it would execute the teleport command where the coordinates are relative to the executor of the command. So if you tried to teleport, let's say, uh, chickens upwards, it wouldn't teleport upwards, it would teleport to you and then upwards from you. T slash TP is a little bit of a special case. It didn't have, or you didn't really have to specify the name of the entity after slash TP, which made it seem like it was just simply, oh, you're just gonna teleport the entity to a certain location from that entity rather than yourself. Now they introduced slash teleport, but then there was a lot of uh, backlash. Now they've moved slash TP to slash teleport, and now you don't have the option to teleport a chicken simply a few blocks up. Now there are obviously some merits to this change. So it makes a lot of sense. It synergizes well with the changes with slash execute. But the problem is that places somewhat of an onus on the player base to look at these patch notes or these change notes, um, the command changes, that they ordinarily wouldn't be interested in, um, because a lot of people don't want to read all of this jargon. Of course, if there are some technical issues that I'm not aware of that will force them to make this change, then fine. There's obviously a lot more consistency now, but slash TP has always been that little iffy command that everyone uses more than probably every other command in this, uh, in this list. So let me know what you think about this specific change it's probably more of a big deal for a lot of different players, not me. But just understand that slash TP is no longer relevant. It's redundant now. If you want to teleport an entity upwards a few blocks, you're going to have to use slash execute rather than just slash TP. Okay, so entity selectors, huge change here as well. You no longer have min and max. Now, what's going on here? If you want to select a single score, you simply have equals, which is fine. Makes a lot of sense. If you want a range inclusive, so this is not in between, it's going to include 10 and 12, you simply have two periods or full stops. Uh, don't know why they chose two. It makes more sense than one, but why two? It's probably a coding thing. I don't know. Um, if you want anything at least five, you simply do two periods after the five. And if you want anything below 15, you do two periods before 15, in between the equals and the value you want. Now, Dinnerbone's using level here. I'm pretty sure this applies to score. So simply have score underscore the objective equals. I'm pretty sure that's still kept. Uh, it might change. He doesn't have this written down here, but that's what I'd assume as well. Okay, so arcane shorthand names have been renamed. Arcane basically means uh, unpredictable or not known by many people. Uh, M is game mode, you know that, so you basically uh, cannot use these guys anymore. Uh, it's game mode level, as you can see up there. R and RM is now distance. If you want to specify a maximum or minimum radius, you simply have this range that you want to specify. So rather than have R equals and RM equals, R is obviously maximum, RM equals minimum. So minimum, not many people use, it's really just R. Uh, you basically have distance, which is great. I love this change. But again, it just means a lot of people have to read this. If if no one has read this, 
in 1.13, they would be completely stuffed. So you've got Rx, Rxm equals X rotation, so the player's um, rotation around the horizontal plane. Y rotation is uh, up and down. So you don't have R, Y, R, M. Now one thing they're missing here is D. That was when you wanted to specify like a, a square or a cube. That's not here. I'm pretty sure he's missed it or he hasn't really written it down. Um, of course, if this is really his intention, um, I'm pretty sure he's forgotten about this or hasn't written it down. Uh, C equals uh, the limit, so the number of entities you want to select in the selector. Now there is obviously a problem that does present itself, because now that C is gone, people have been using C to locate the closest or furthest uh, entity away. C equals negative 1 has been the one that has been used to select the furthest entity. So this has obviously changed, it's now sort equals furthest. Spaces, that's wonderful, we've already talked about this. Uh, NBT, very similar to items, already talked about that. Now repeat arguments are now allowed, which is great. So I'm assuming this doesn't just apply to type, it also applies to teams, so you can use team equals uh, exclamation mark, team equals exclamation mark, so multiple of them within a selector, which is wonderful. Uh, this is a great change. Now obviously this doesn't make sense because you can't be a cow and a chicken. Let's quickly talk about sorting, we've gone through this. Sort nearest, sort furthest, sort random. Um, so this is obviously self-explanatory, sort random is random sorting. This is really just like priorities uh, or order. And arbitrary is just an optimization thing, so if you don't care about sorting. So, I hope this is like defaulted. Uh, I'm not sure if you have to type this in all the time. It seems to be a little bit excessive. Um, nonetheless, this is great. And items, yeah, this is very similar to blocks. It's all within the same space now. It's no, There's no separate NBT that you type. It's all within the item itself. So there's a lot of research that's now necessary for even the simplest things. Um, that's probably my biggest gripe with 1.13. It's not really a gripe in itself. Hopefully um, you're not too intimidated by this. Uh, I said I would be walking you through everything and if you have any questions, I know my comment sections have been a little bit uh, chaotic recently and it's mainly because Google doesn't send me um, anything anymore. There's, I don't have any notifications anymore for comments so I have to look through them uh, in my own time and check them as frequently as I can but I've been getting quite a bit recently, so if you have any questions, uh, do leave them in the comments, but if you have any uh, very urgent questions or remarks, you can send me a tweet or an email. All my details are in the video description, but otherwise, thank you all for watching. If I got anything wrong in this video, please highlight them because this is very important stuff. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. Leave a like, subscribe for more updates, creative content. Take care.